just, uh, just a couple of points I wanted to pick up on. Um, uh, when I came in, there was a discussion around you know, incoherent policy incoherence and the negative impacts of renewables on, on the ETS together with the energy efficiency. I just want to say that um, the reason why the price is very low at the moment today um, and it's uh, the, the additional depression um, is due to the excessive amount of uh, international offsets. That's um, clean development mechanism, CDM credits, and JI credits. The, it's their surplus which is causing uh, uh, their access surplus, which we're going to carry from the first five years into the next couple of years, which is the reason why we have such a huge surplus with a lot of industrial sectors. So, if we are going to analyze the problem, we first need to diagnose it correctly. Um, and I think with renewables, they, they make an important contribution and they are, uh, they're a critical part of, of our future, uh, of our decarbonization pathway, because at least we can physically see them. And we know the di direction of the trajectory that they're going in. Um, and whereas a, a carbon price itself just allows for any kind of abatement, any kind of accounting uh, type of abatement, whereas you know, renewable energy policy is important. The other thing um, that we, and I, I, I absolutely agree with what Avril said, I think she's, um, she's absolutely hit the nail on the head when she says that we have to be very, very cautious about opening up <coughs> Pandora's box. Um, one of the one of the options on the table is is the the, the backlog, a tiny change to the auctioning profile, um, as 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 almost the first step to buy us time to, to build up the momentum to have a bigger discussion um, around how we want to to look at the ETS um, in the future. Just just for your information, the the changes that were agreed in two thousand and nine um, started off as discussions in two thousand and seven, so there is a long time lag. Um, and we can't wait for the big structural changes that we want to make uh, because we're not likely to see them have any effect before 2020. And if that's the case, then effectively we're taking the ETS off the table for 2020 and we're asking a really serious question as to whether we want that to be part of the 2030 future. So our thinking is, is that we, we don't like the back load. We think it's, it is not tinkering around the edges it's, and it's not really going to have that much of a price impact. It's, it's more of a political signal to say that, look, we as European institutions, we as the European stakeholders back the ETS. We want it to work. We're prepared to set up and prepare for a longer debate. That's what the backloading is all about. And what, what that's doing is allowing more and more time. And if I was to make a wish, um, the wish would be that in that time that a lot of the industrial sectors who originally started off and supported the emissions trading scheme concept, it wasn't the UK government, it wasn't the Danish government, it was the companies who said we would prefer a market-based approach in those countries that allowed those countries to invest in that architecture. Mm -hmm. Those companies now need to come forward and give us policymakers a bit more direction. Are we, do we really back the ETS? Do we really want it to work? It's for them to come forward um, and uh, you know, allow us to, to have another debate around emissions trading. Going on to that, um, the point about um, uh, China, um, as E3G uh, and myself, we're working uh, with one of the pilot schemes um, in, uh, in China. And there's two, two important things that are worth knowing um, about the scheme. It's going to be very different from the European scheme very, very different. However, every single person in the local government, in the central government, and all of the supporting agencies have their annual performance review based upon the success of their emissions trading scheme. So that means if it fails, jobs will be lost, and they'll be lost very, very quickly. One of the dynamics that's happened just very recently is the Chinese national government um, has kind of indicated that there are a couple of front runners within the, the, the pilot schemes. That's already led to people being very anxious about their future within um, the Chinese political system. And all of a sudden, those regions who are not in the front runners are the ones who are ringing us up every day now, saying, OK, what do we do to get back into number one status? China has a race to the top in carbon legislation. I agree with Barbara, it's a, it's a messy country. One good step sometimes is undermined, but they're moving in a direction. And the, the one question that I can never answer is, you know, if they want to go down the route of emissions trading, why 
you know, why would they want to invest that much political capital when Europe itself is sitting down and watching their emissions trading scheme wither away? And I think that's a really difficult one because that goes back to our credibility. We have no choice but to, to, to strengthen the emissions trading scheme. It's vital for us. And can I just make one, one final point, if I may, um, around the, the issue of embedded emissions? Um, and, and border taxes, which sometimes go together, sometimes they're they're kept apart. Um, border measures are are border measures are high politics. There's no there's no walking away. Once you make that threat, if you cannot back it up credibly, people will see through it. Um, now we have a border dispute at the moment in the ETS Aviation, and I'm sure that um, all of the I'm sure the Irish, uh, Irish Environment Minister and Aviation Minister are having a wonderful discussion around whether they would like to have these border measures extended to the steel sector or the cement sector or any other sector. Um, Europe is a huge trading bloc. We we set the rules, and what you find from the international negotiations from Australia, from China, is that almost word for word. Everybody copies what we do. We have huge soft power. Now, the, 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 the easy option would be to threaten everybody. Um, I don't think people will listen to our threats. I don't think they'll copy our threats. But if we go with sound, credible um, solutions, then actually I, I, I'm pretty happy to bet my mortgage that people will copy our sound solutions. Um, and on the embedded emissions, um, sorry, the, 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 the reverse side of that discussion is, is embedded emissions. Now, um, the two countries that talk a lot about embedded emissions are Poland and China. Now, the Poles say, we, you know, we would like to have consumption-based policies because then they're, they're not responsible for their emissions. Somebody else is. Um, that might work for a country like Poland. However, if China <laughs> there, you know, is, is put in that box, then effectively you've let the one cat um, um, off the hook, and this is the one that's changing the most. So, uh, you know, I just I just want to kind of be positive here. We're, we're very, you know, this is a slightly negative in the sense that, you know, we're very inward looking, and because we're so close to the the coal face, we're, we're forgetting that we actually achieved a lot um, in 2008 and 2009. Europe was about to go into the biggest recession ever. Um, yet the, the political decision makers actually did the right thing. They were under a lot of pressure to delay the package, to go back and look at it after the recession. Um, they actually took a very courageous step. And, and I think, you know, it, it fills me with a lot of confidence that when, when the chips are down, you know, our European institutions and our national institutions and everybody within the system is actually able to do the right thing. It's not the perfect thing, but it's a step in the right direction. And that's the kind of confidence we need uh, when it comes to not just looking at the emissions trading scheme, not just looking at um, you know, where our own internal machinations and political deadlocks are, but the real power that we have um, on the international scene. We, we should never forget that. Okay.